Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be working on another old Pioneer stereo receiver. This time we've got a SX590. Not too long ago I worked on the SX690. So I think this is the version that puts out 20 watts per channel and it, I believe it came out the same year which would be 1978. And I'm guessing also that it has these um, integrated circuit uh, power packs for the output um, amplifier so the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything at all I'm going to go ahead and take the cover off and take a look inside that's always step one before I do anything else even though it's sometimes hard to resist the temptation of turning it on and I do do that but this is the more proper and correct way I would say so let me go ahead and pull the cover off so I got this thing open and there seems to be nothing unusual here going on. No unusual smell, no missing parts. All the fuses are in place and they all seem to be intact. Even the line fuse which is over on the side. Um, Sticks fuses all intact. That's a good sign. I don't think they're actually, I don't think they're bad. Um, I think my next step, to what I'm going to do is go ahead and power this thing up I'm gonna go ahead well this time I'm, I'm using a variable isolation transformer and I'm slowly gonna bring up the voltage and see if anything unusual happens so I'm slowly bringing up the line voltage you can see here and nothing unusual it's not Drawing very much current either. So I just keep going and hope nothing oddball happens. Seems to be okay so far. Nothing has started smoking. So now I'm going to go ahead and check the speaker outputs make sure there's no DC voltage there this is a, a dual power supply of positive and negative and at the out um, it has no output transformer just a power transformer and I should be reading close to zero volts at the speaker outputs and then if that works out okay then I am going to go ahead and hook some speakers up so here we go. I'm going to go ahead and I've got the voltmeter attached and you can see my test leads and I'm checking for DC voltage. We don't want none of that DC getting to the speaker coil and possibly damaging something. So here I go again. We'll start things up. Okay, I'm bringing up the voltage again. Got full line voltage now. Let me take a look at the voltmeter. Oh, okay, that's that's okay right there. Point zero nine, or it's even dropping down more. So let me go ahead and check the other side. So now I'm testing the other side, and here I've got. You can see there I've got eighty millivolts which I believe we can live with that so let me go ahead and attach some speakers so I got loudspeakers hooked up now <clears throat> and um, I got the thing on of course I got one missing knob I gotta check the box and see if it's in there I couldn't find it um, I do notice now I'm on FM and there's absolutely nothing going on, even though I have an antenna hooked up. And that scratch in there, <clears> there's <throat> a scratching sound that just might be um, a dirty volume control potentiometer. Go ahead to AM. Nothing. Zilch. <clears throat> Which I'm hoping it's something 
common to both uh, circuits AM and FM. Go to phono. Still got the scratching. And now to aux. Still got that scratching. So I think the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and clean all the potentiometers in here and the switches if I can. I'm just going to spray some contact cleaner down there and then I'll continue on. This is like the least of my worries. Let me get that done quick. Okay, I got the pots cleaned up but I couldn't get to everything. Still got some scratching. There's, I'm hoping I don't have to pull this out and unsolder and then either try to I can only get in one side, try to spray something in there. I can only get in one channel. <laughs> now, suddenly music came back up. And I also noticed the green LED light came on. So I might have a problem with a bad connection somewhere. So I've got um, adequate radio response. I think I might have a problem with the I think the SX690 I worked on had a problem with the voltage regular. I think it was a bad solder joint. So I think I'm going to have to do the same thing to this. I, I would guess. So I'm going to go ahead and take the bottom off. Bottom plate off. Now it's in the same spot as the SX 691 was here this transistor here this is Q401 and it does look suspiciously dull if you ask me unfortunately I can't focus any closer so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the old solder and then go ahead and just redo it and hopefully that should take care of the problem in fact I've been wiggling one of the pins here with this with these needle nose pliers and now the light up front that source LED is no longer working so I think very well this this is it right here in fact when I grab this pin with the needle nose pliers I can actually it moves a lot telling me it doesn't have a good bond here with the actual pad so that actually took care of the problem you can see the green little um, source light is back on little green LED and here's the work I did I mean I'm not going to go ahead and win the uh, world soldering championships um, but I can say it looks much better than before and now it's working so I'm running a few more final tests with this unit and it's checking out okay I've got some test instruments hooked up but it's too tedious to show this all on video and I've already did tests on the SX690 which is the little bit larger model than this the 590 here and the tests basically overlap so I guess I'm done with this unit and I just gotta find the missing knob thanks for watching